So a couple of months ago, I made a video about how my Streamlight TLR2, which had given me many years of faithful service on the job as a police officer, seen tens of thousands of rounds, got me through all sorts of training classes and SWAT school and everything else, finally crapped out on me. Well, the light itself didn't crap out on me, but the laser was starting to get a little finicky about whether it wanted to stay on or not. So I sent it back to Streamlight for warranty return, but when I sent it back to Streamlight for warranty return, I had to go buy another light to mount on the gun because my pistol wouldn't retain in my duty holster without having a light mounted on it. And I realized that Streamlight came out with a new light since I had bought my original one, the TLR2 HLG. Three times the lumens, going from 200 in the original Streamlight TLR2 to over 600 in the new one, and from a red laser to a green laser that's supposed to be a lot brighter. I used this for about a month while my original TLR2 was away getting serviced. And now that I have both of them back, I'm going to do a head-to-head -head using tests based on actual situations that happen on the street to show the pluses and minuses of each light and what you can expect from them if you mount them on your pistol and use it for police or security work or if you're using them for concealed carry. Where are you going? Get out of the way! So we're going to start off today with our most classic of law enforcement specific flashlight applications and that is through the tinted glass on the back of a minivan or any other stock tinted glass. So this is just a normal minivan stock uh, Mopar tinted glass on a car, something you would run across on the street all the time. Here's my Streamlight Stinger LED for reference. The TLR2 standard, as you can see the TLR2 standard gives you a little more corona to the light than you would from the Streamlight Stinger LED standard. And you've got that red laser dot that makes it through the tints all right. And finally, we've got the TLR2 HLG, but it gives us even more Corona into the car. And it gives us the green laser that's a little easier to pick up going through tints because that green laser is far, far brighter than you would get from a red laser. Here's across a parking lot, maybe 60 to 70 yards from a bank. You're gonna have to forgive the exhaust from my car getting in the way, but that is a real life thing that would really happen. We've got the Streamlight Stinger LED standard, which makes it to the building. And you kind of see if there was somebody standing over there. Next, we've got the Streamlight TLR2, which makes it to the building about as well as the standard does. But you have that red dot, which you can definitely pick up from the building because it's dark in this environment where we're at. And then the Streamlight DHLG, which is really made for this type of of distance. It has a lot of throw and that green laser pushes even through the exhaust of my car and hits the building. The thing we have to ask ourselves with this though is, is this a circumstance where we'd be wanting to make a pistol shot anyway? Here's another across a parking lot shot. This is at a little further distance. I estimate probably about a hundred yards, but it's darker so it gives you a better response for what you're going to see with the light on video. Here's my standard duty light, light the Streamlight Stinger LED. You get a spot, and anywhere in that spot, you'd be able to identify what's going on, but you kind of lose the corona at 100 yards. You're only getting the throw that the light has. There's a Streamlight Stinger TLR2. As you can see, you get a little better of a throw since it's a weapon light. Apparently, they made the reflector more for throw than they did for corona on this one, and it's got a bigger throw spot that's about the same brightness, and you can just kind of make out the red laser at that distance. Again, we have to ask ourselves whether we would actually be wanting to make a shot at this distance. But here's the Streamlight Stinger LED HLG, and you can see that green laser, the further you push it out and the larger that laser dot gets, because it's so much brighter, it makes a large dot on the building that's very easy to see. But at this distance, would we want to be making a pistol shot? Now, this is one of those areas that I think that this light would really shine as a rifle-mounted light, where you would actually be able to throw at that distance and identify, and the laser might actually be useful. But then again, we have to make sure that our laser is staying zeroed at that distance. Here's a pretty classic issue with urban and suburban police departments where we're looking down an alley a couple houses down, checking in alley late at night for either your stolen toter garbage can or the weird noise that somebody heard behind their house or looking for someone that you're looking for from a foot pursuit or just checking alleys to make sure there isn't anybody back there on any type of shenanigans. You see the Streamlight Stinger LED, it does its job as it normally does. This is exactly what this light is designed for, checking through alleys for 
suspicious persons and checking on noises in the alley or doing utility tasks. Next, we have the Streamlight TLR2. And the TLR2 also does this job very well. This is the distance that this light really shines is when we're working inside at 25, 30 yards. It has plenty of throw for this application. The laser is pretty easy to pick up. Next, we're going to look at the Streamlight TLR2 HLG. And you're going to see that it's putting out a lot more light. It has a lot more throw. It's a lot easier to pick up at these distances. And that green dot really sticks out. Even up against the white fence, you can still see it. Here's an inside shot of the house, and here's where I kind of separate from thinking the TLR2 HLG would be the best for the application. We're going to compare just the Streamlight's TLR2 and the TLR2 HLG here. First, we're going to look at the Streamlight TLR2. As you can see, it throws plenty of light to see what you're looking at in the house, and you can pick up that red dot fairly easily at these close distances. When we push on to the Streamlight TLR2 HLG, we start having blowout in the flare in the center of the camera. And the reason you're getting blowout and flare on the center of the camera, even on dark objects, is that this thing's putting out an enormous amount of light to be using indoors. Too much light, in my opinion, to be using indoors. And since most of my work is indoors, it kind of, this is where me and the TLR2 HLG start to separate on the issues. The light actually overrides the green laser to a certain certain extent, and you get so much bounce back off of things, even from the corona of the light. The corona of the light is almost as bright as your standard duty light shining at a wall. So there is an effect where you don't even have to hit yourself directly in the eyes when you're passing by a mirror in order to get blinded with this light. And as you can see from this, it has a lot of corona to it. Finally, just for reference, we're going to do a couple from the street to the house shots. Here's Streamlight Stinger LED. The TLR2, again with my exhaust kind of in the way, and the TLR2 HLG. So as you can see from the video, the TLR2 HLG has serious advantages when it comes to being used in an outdoor environment. If you're going to be spotting things at great distance or you need to use that laser at great distance, it is definitely worth springing for the higher end model with more lumens and with the brighter green laser. However, when you're indoors, it tends to be a little much. The bright light tends to be very, very bright up against white walls, and if you hit yourself with it in the eyes when you're across the room from a mirror, you're going to have some problems, especially if you're using your flashlight with the proper technique of building searches, not just leaving it on all the time. I said a while ago I may end up using the TLR2 HLG on a long gun, however I've rethought that recently and I think there's a good handgun that I can put this on where I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Now the, the original TLR2 seems to work a lot better indoors but not have as much throw for use outdoors. Since most of my work is in an indoor environment, since most of my work is clearing buildings or dealing with people in cars at pretty short distances, the TLR2 has a very serious advantage in that it has a red laser. While the red laser isn't as bright as the green laser, it still gets the job done, and we have to remember that part of the use of a, of a laser, at least the use of the laser on the street, is a psychological use. When you put that red laser dot inside a car that you're doing a high risk or felony stop on, people see it in their eyes or they see it showing up on their chest, they know from TV and movies exactly what that red laser means. What I've noticed in the time that I've used the TLR2 HLG is that the green laser doesn't have that same effect. It's brighter and so people see it, but they don't immediately get that visceral reaction because popular media hasn't caught up with the times with the introduction of green lasers. We don't have green lasers in movies being used by people as laser sights for guns so people don't get that immediate missile reaction that they did from the red laser. Now since I don't have need of the TLR2 HLG on a rifle and I work in a highly urban environment so the TLR2 standard works better for me, I'm going to be using the TLR2 normal model on my duty pistol, my Glock 35 that I carry at work and I've decided that I'm going to carry the TLR2 HLG on one of my off-duty pistols, which is my Glock 22, and I think I'm going to use this for walking my dog. I very often walk my dog at night, and having the TLR2 HLG is going to give me a whole lot more light for being outdoors walking the dog, and give me an excuse to go buy another holster, which, hey, who doesn't need an excuse to go buy more cool stuff? So that's kind of the end for now of the whole pistol weapon light saga that I've had going on for the last couple of months. If you guys like this type of content or gives you 
insight into how police work works, or if you just like the gear reviews, you should go check me out on Instagram. The link is in the description below. On Instagram, I post more pictures of my gear and kind of thoughts of the day and cool stuff that I'm doing with police work. And if you want to help out with the channel, go check out Patreon. Patreon is what allows me to get new gear and equipment for the channel and to be able to put the time in to make videos to entertain all of you. I'd also like to encourage you to check the description area down below. There's a lot of sponsors and affiliates that I think you should check out down there. And until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. I'd like to thank all the Patreon supporters and especially the shift supervisor level Patreon supporters that we have listed here. Your contributions are what allows free field training to continue on and become better. Thank you.